Welcome to another session. Today uh, we are going to look at SCADA systems. SCADA systems. So, we are going to look at SCADA systems and SCADA is simply an acronym uh, for supervisory control and data acquisition. So that is what SCADA stands for. So it is an, it is an acronym for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. And SCADA systems, major work of SCADA systems is always to monitor and control plant or equipment. Uh, these ones can be in industries such, such as uh, telecommunication, wastewater control, energy, oil and gas, transportation, among others. Uh, and these systems usually encompass uh, the transfer of data that should happen uh, between the central host computer and uh, the central host, host computer that is usually in the SCADA systems and uh, what we usually refer to as the remote terminal units. That is the RTUs, uh, remote terminal units. And this one can also happen, uh, the, the remote terminal units can also be uh, sensors or you can talk of the PLCs. So the main work of the SCADA here is always to gather information, transfer information, and carry out need analysis and control. So it is going to gather information that is happening at the remote parts. And then after gathering this particular information, uh, it will uh, uh, transport them or rather carry them using a communication system uh, to uh, the central host computer whereby now somebody or somebody who is responsible uh, for that, for monitoring can now see whatever is happening. So basically the SCADAs will always gather information, transfer it and carry out need analysis and control. The SCADA can be simple or it can be complex depending on what uh, you want to do. So for intercommunication uh, between discrete components in the SCADA, uh, we usually use the PSN or you can talk of local network or wide area network uh, can be used to ensure that uh, there is that particular communication. So why do we want to use SCADA? So why do we want to use SCADA? So the question that uh, we can ask ourselves, why SCADA? Why do you want to use SCADA? So there are several uh, things that uh, will make SCADA to be very, very useful, especially in control. One of them is that it usually saves time and energy. Uh, you realize that uh, what we are trying to do is that we are trying to gather information from the remote part or where, where maybe the, 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 the controls are supposed to be done in the real systems. And then this information, we bring it back. We, we bring it through a, well, uh, through a communication system. So this one will usually save time and energy, uh, and at time, energy, and money in terms of uh, less traveling of the workers, so there will be no workers that will be traveling. It also reduces the manpower needs because uh, for you to get information, uh, the communication will just be through a network and therefore there is no need of someone to go and bring back information. Again, uh, there is also an aspect still under saving time. There is the increased production efficiency of a company and also it is cost effective uh, for power systems. And again, it saves a lot of energy. So the first one, the first advantage that we did talk about is saves time and money. So it saves time and money. Saves time and money. And this one, we've talked about less traveling, reduces the manpower. There is also saving the energy and also the cost effective uh, power system. Another, dis another advantage that we can also talk about why do we use SCADA or the reason for using SCADA is that it is reliable. So it will give information reliably without necessarily having to take a walk to the real places where these particular systems that are supposed to be monitored are uh, found. So the third one, the third advantage or the third reason why we can use SCADA is because uh, the supervisory control uh, it, it supervises the control uh, of a particular system. So in that case, it can supervise and maybe you can also have a closed loop system whereby it is going to uh, carry out the control by itself. So 
we've, we've, we've mentioned that uh, the SCADA is uh, uh, supervisory uh, control and data acquisition. And in that case, what does it entail? When you talk of uh, supervisory, uh, supervisory role uh, and data acquisition, this is very, very important to the uh, supervisory uh, people, the, the people concerned with the superv supervision of a system. And that one we are talking about, the operators, the engineers, and the supervisors. When it comes to control, then the, the, the control mechanism that uh, it, it uh, entails, we usually have the aspect of the monitoring, there is also the telemetry system, and we also have the remote terminal units. The other aspect that it also entails is uh, the use of the data acquisition system. The data acquisition system here, it access and uh, acquire information or data from equipment. And again, it sends different sites through telemetry, and these ones can either be analog or digital. So let's look at the elements, or rather the components of, uh, uh, we can talk of the elements or the components of a SCADA system elements or components of a SCADA system. Elements, or we can also talk of them as components of SCADA system. So just as we have mentioned uh, that uh, the SCADA system is supposed to give information from the remote uh, uh, places where the particular systems are found. So in this case, we usually have one of the systems that we usually have is the field interface devices. Field interface devices. We have what we refer to as the field interface devices. And the field interface devices, these are uh, simply, when you talk about this, we are talking about the sensors and actuators. We are talking about another part we cannot also talk about. The RTUs, that is the remote terminal units, and PLCs. The RTUs and the PLCs. Another uh, uh, important, so this ones, the field interface devices are supposed to gather information. So this will give information about the control system that is happening at the other end, at the remote end. And then after that, the information that comes uh, from the field interface devices has to be communicated by what we call communication system system. So the communication system here will relay all the information that is, uh, it has gathered, gathered from that part uh, to, or rather it will transfer data between the field interface devices and uh, the control units and this one should go to the computer, uh, the, the host computer in the SCADA control system. So these systems, uh, the, the systems of transfer of data can either be, you can talk of guided systems or unguided systems, whereby at gui uh, guided systems we are simply talking about uh, where there is a physical connection between the field interface devices and the central host computer where the information is supposed to be taken. Uh, so we are saying that uh, we can talk of guided or unguided. Unguided is whereby you can use the lights of the satellites and so on, the, 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 the real physical network is not visible. So that is uh, what uh, we can talk about as far as uh, 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 the communication system is concerned. Maybe we'll talk about the details later on. Number three, uh, the, the third one is the central host computer. So we can talk of the central host computer. So the central host computer here, we are simply talking about uh, uh, central host computer, it can be called SCADA center, uh, server, or master terminal unit. And its main work is always to ensure that, uh, so this is where all the information that is being relayed here comes to. And maybe this is where we can have our operator uh, so that the operator can always respond to whatever uh, is happening in uh, that particular system, especially what has been communicated from the field interface devices. The other one uh, that we can also talk about is uh, what we refer to as human machine interface. Human machine interface. Human machine interface. So when you talk about the human machine interface, then this one we are simply talking about a collection of standard uh, or custom software systems. And this usually provide the central host computer and uh, 
the operator. So the main work of this is because, because the SCADA systems usually talk about the, the language that uh, they, the, the communication is done through is not, uh, cannot be understood by human beings. So there are softwares that will enable the communication between the human being and also the machines uh, to, for the, to be efficient. So this is uh, the function of the human machine interface. And in most cases, these are, are simply softwares that enable a human being to respond to whatever is happening into that particular system. So we are going to look at uh, this in details, but before we do, do that, we can look at a typical uh, SCADA system. So let's look at a typical uh, SCADA system. So when you look at a typical SCADA system, then uh, basically what we are simply talking about is uh, where we have a SCADA master. We can talk of having a SCADA master here. We can talk of a SCADA master. So here we can have a SCADA master. Or we can talk of uh, master terminal unit. So we can talk of it. SCADA master, and then this SCADA master must have the communication system. So we can talk of that as the communication system, which uh, we can talk of as wide area network, depending on the distance. So we can talk of one, and then we can have the operator station. Maybe there is the operator station here. So here we also have, this one goes to the RTUs, or remote terminal units, RTUs. So the RTUs usually contain, uh, the, it can also have the PLCs. And then here we can have the operator workstation. Operator workstation. Uh, we have the operator workstation. Then again, maybe different uh, SCADA system, uh, different communication system to that, maybe going to another uh, system, uh, another RTU. So we can also have another RTU in that case. So in the, this case, uh, this is what uh, uh, the SCADA system uh, in take. So if you look at the, uh, just uh, the particular systems that uh, we've talked about, uh, the, the components or the elements, so we have the host computer or the SCADA center, then there is a communication system which is always, uh, we can talk of one, depending on the distances. And then at this SCADA system, this is where we also have the operator, that is the operator workstation. And it is at the same place where we are supposed to have the human machine interface that translates whatever is happening to the RTU to the operator so that uh, a, a perfect response can be achieved. So uh, that is uh, a typical uh, block diagram of a SCADA system. So let's look at uh, each and every uh, part of the SCADA in details. We can now look at each and every part of SCADA uh, system or components in details. So the first component that I want us to look at now is, so we can talk of now, we want to look at them in details. The first one is uh, what we are going to refer to as uh, the field interface devices. Field interface devices. So when you talk about the field interface devices, just as we have mentioned, uh, the, the sensors usually form the eyes uh, and the ears of the SCADA system. And the sensors usually include the likes of the reservoirs, uh, what we can use to sense the, the level meters, uh, the flow meters. You can also talk about the valve position, uh, temperature transmitters, power consumption meters, pressure meters, among others. And they are, they're also, uh, they also we usually have the actuators, and the actuators are usually the hands of uh, uh, the SCADA system whereby we can talk of the actuators like the electric valve actuators, the motor control switch boards, electronic chemical closing facilities, among others. So those ones are some of uh, the actuators uh, that uh, we can mention. When we talk about the second one, which is now the remote terminal units or the RTUs, uh, second one, we can talk about the remote terminal units, remote terminal units. Uh, or we can talk about it as the RTUs. So when you talk about the RTUs here, the RTUs usually contain uh, several things. Uh, the the one, one of them that is contained in the RTU, we can talk about the PLC. We have the PLC that is contained in the RTU. And the major work of the RTU here is always, it is an electronic, uh, it, it is supposed to convert electronic signals 
uh, that are re received from the field interface devices into a language. And this one is usually a language that we refer to as the communication protocol used to transmit the data over a communication channel. Another thing that it has is the PLC, that the PLC is just uh, uh, an automatic switching device, uh, programmable, it is a programmable switching device, and it will automate the monitoring and control of industry, the industrial industry facilities. So the PLC will connect directly to the field data interface devices, and again, incorporate the program intelligence in the form of logical procedures that will be executed in the event of certain conditions. So we are saying that uh, as far as the remote terminal units are concerned, the remote terminal units usually has uh, uh, the PLCs. Uh, it also has uh, the, uh, the PLCs. It also has the sensors. So that is what we find in the remote terminal units. We are talking about the PLCs. We are talking about the sensors. Again, uh, we can talk about uh, uh, the actuators. Huh? And the actuators, just as we have mentioned, we can talk about uh, the valves, uh, the pumps, and the motors. And when you talk about the sensors, we can talk of the pressure sensors. We can talk about the temperature sensors, the light sensors, humidity sensors wind speed sensors, and all maybe other sensors that uh, you can use depending on the physical quantity that you are supposed to measure in the other end. So the next uh, particular, uh, the next thing that we can talk about again here is what we refer to as the communication network. So we can talk about communication network. So since uh, all the activities that are happening at the other end must be communicated uh, to the host computer, so the communication network usually provide a means by which the data uh, can be transferred, provide a means by which the data can be transferred between the central host computer and the field-based uh, RTUs. So it ensures that we transfer the data, and this one is uh, uh, between the central host computer and uh, the field-based RTUs. So the medium that is always used in, or in, in order to transmit uh, the data is it can be the telephone cable, it can be a radio, or any other. So we can talk of the cables you used in a factory. You can use in, in, in a conditions where you have uh, different small distances, you can always use uh, the cables. Like for example, within the factory, uh, the practical system uh, where we have small geographical area, but in, in, in covering large geographical area, uh, the cables will be of high cost, and therefore you can use uh, maybe the telephone lines or the least, uh, least lines or dialed up, and more for, for uh, in, because this particular system will be economical. For the remote areas, you can use the radio, and uh, where there is lands and ones that are available, then they can be used to implement SCADA systems. Another component that we can talk about is the central host computer. Central host computer. So when you talk about the central host computer, in this case, the central host computer is just a single computer or a network of computer server that provides uh, a man-machine uh, man uh, operate, operator interface uh, to the SCADA system. So the computer process, uh, the computer uh, process the information received uh, and uh, from the other end, that is now the, 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 the field interface devices, and after processing the information that is received, it sends them, it, 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 that is sent from the RTU sites, uh, then it puts it in a language, uh, in a form that the operator can work with. And the operator terminals are always uh, connected to the central host computer by either a LAN or one or any other communication system that will be uh, good for that. And at this point, we will have the viewing screens and the associated data will be displayed for the operator. So in this case, at this point, uh, the interface will ensure that uh, the data is displayed and the person that is responsible, that is the operator or whoever is at the SCADA center will be able to display in uh, the information uh, using, in most cases, they usually use the, 
very good, nice graphical user interface. Eh? Graphical user interface in order to uh, animate whatever is happening at the other end. So the other uh, component that we can talk about is the operator workstations uh, and the software components. So at this point, we will usually have several software components uh, that are networked with the SCADA central uh, host computer. So this, that is the main work of the operator workstations. So they, they are here, the client requests and send information to the central host computer based on the request of, uh, uh, based on the request as well as the action of the operator. So some of the SCADA system softwares that are used, in this case, we can talk of several SCADA system softwares that are used. One of them will be the central host or operating system. And this one is basically used to control the central host computer network. You can talk of the Windows, Unix, or any other uh, uh, that can be used uh, in order to control uh, the operating systems. The other one can be the operator terminal uh, operating system. This is used to control the central host as well as the operator and the client machines. Uh, another software that can be used is the central host computer application. So that one should handle the transmission uh, and reopen. Uh, that one should handle uh, the, both the transmission as well as representation of data to and from the RTUs and the central host. So it also offers uh, a, a very nice graphical user interface, which uh, usually mimic uh, the screens, uh, mimic the screens or whatever is happening at the control functions. The other uh, important, uh, that, uh, important software can, that can be used in this case is the operator terminal application that enables the, uh, the operator or rather the access of information available in the central host computer applications. The other software can also be the communication protocol drivers, which are based within the central host and the RTUs, and their main function is always translation and interpretation of data between the ends of uh, the communication links in the system. So they are the main work of the computer, of, of, of the, uh, uh, the communication protocol is always to ensure that the communication happens efficiently by this giving the rules of communication. And that one, it also involves the translation as well as uh, the interpretation of data that is between the ends of the communication links in the system. We can also talk about the communication network management software that controls uh, the communication network and usually allow the communication network themselves to monitor uh, for performance and failures. Monitors for performance and failures. The other one we can also talk about is the RTU automation software. And that, is, that, is allow, that allows the engineering staff uh, to configure and to maintain the application housed in the RTUs and the PLCs. So or, or in the RTUs or the PLCs. So these ones are softwares that uh, are used for the PLCs depending on the type of the PLC that you will be using. Each and every PLC has got its own software, like for the Siemens, uh, you can use um, the Microwin, or you can use, uh, uh, for the Mitsubishi, you can use uh, the developer, and so on and so forth. So each and every PLC has got its own software. So those ones are some of the major components that uh, we can talk about as far as uh, the PLCs are concerned. So. We are now going to go uh, through what we call the SCADA architectures. So, SCADA architectures. And when you talk about the SCADA architectures, these are always based on the generations. So, they usually involve generations, and basically, SCADA involves three generations. The first one is the, one is, uh, the first generation, and the first generation is always referred to as monolithic. So, we can talk of the first generation, and it is always referred to as monolithic. Then we have the second generation, and that is always referred to as the networked. Then the third generation, which is, uh, can talk of the third, not network, this is distributed. Distributed. And then the third generation, 
is the networked. So those are the three generations of SCADA systems that we're going to talk about. So we are going to start by looking at the first generation, which is uh, uh, monolithic. So when you talk about the monolithic, which is the first generation architecture, so this one was the first, and majorly one of the, so let's look at some of the characteristics that it had. The first characteristic of this system is that it was standalone system with virtually no connectivity to other systems. So it means that when you had to control a system, you could only have one uh, system with all the components. So it was a standalone. Another one is that another characteristic of this is that the wide uh, area network were designed purely for communica communication system. And terminal, they, they were simply defined uh, purely for communication system, that is between the RTUs and the SCADA center or the central host computer. So basically there was no any other thing that uh, they were supposed to do. So they were simply supposed to be communication system uh, for, uh, with the RTUs only. Another characteristic of this is that the communication protocols in use on SCADA networks were developed by vendors, and it is the vendor who had, uh, uh, who owned the RTU equipment that developed uh, each and every uh, communication protocol that was used. Another characteristic of this is that there was the, 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 there was the connectivity to the system, uh, the connectivity to the system, uh, uh, the, con the, the connectivity to the SCADA center, or rather, to the SCADA master station was limited by the system vendors. So the system vendors were the one to define what or what kind of uh, connectivity was supposed to be carried out at this. And this one was done at the bus level via propriety adapter uh, plugged into the CPU backplane. Another characteristic is that uh, the redundancy was also carried out by use of identical mainframe uh, systems. So uh, the redundancy, which means uh, when one of the mainframe system is not able to work, then the system could use a backup, uh, so to ensure that there is a redundancy. This one was to improve on the reli reliability of the system. And the function of the standby system was simply to monitor uh, the primary uh, and take over in the event of uh, uh, detected failure. So that is, uh, those are some of the characteristics of uh, uh, SCADA, or of the first generation, or rather the monolithic architecture. So the monolithic uh, uh, SCADA system. So well, let's look at maybe by an end of diagram, uh, maybe what we are talking about. So when we talk about the first generation, then the same thing, we can talk of a SCADA here. So we can talk of a SCADA master. SCADA master. So the SCADA master here, you have the communication system. And the communication system is simply going to a remote terminal unit. So here, you have the RTU. Again, that one goes to that. Maybe we have another RTU. Then here, we can have another going to another RTU. So you can see that it was a standalone. So of course, the communication system, maybe we did not mention it, but the communication system was in terms of one. So here we have, again, the RTU. So this is uh, the representation of how the monolithic, or rather the first generation SCADA system worked. So the second generation uh, that uh, we can talk about here is now what we refer to as distributed SCADA system. Distributed SCADA system. Distributed SCADA system. So when you talk about the distributed SCADA system here, then this is uh, a generation that took advantage of the development and improvements of system miniaturization. And it used uh, LAN technology in order to distribute the processing across the multiple systems. And again, instead of the mainframe as in the first generation, this one used a small computer, that is the mini computer, 
uh, which were a little bit smaller and also less expensive than what was used in the first generation, that is the mainframe. Again, multiple stations with specific functions were connected to a LAN and shared information with each other in real time. Another characteristic is that uh, some, uh, not, not really a characteristic, but all this, uh, when we talk about uh, uh, the connection, the, the multiple stations, some stations were used uh, for communication processes or with rather communicating with the field interface devices like the RTUs, while some served as operator interfaces, providing the HMI system uh, operators. So basically, those ones are some of the characteristics. And just as we have mentioned, this one now entailed, communication system that it entailed is both LAN and WAN, whereby LAN was done, the communication of LAN was uh, between the operating, uh, was, was to the operating station, whereas the one was from the SCADA system, so rather the communication server to the remote terminal units. And they, in this case also, there was also limit, it was also limited to the hardware, software, and peripheral devices that were provided at least by the vendor. So it was all, whatever was being used, the hardware, the software, were, and as well as the peripheral devices were provided uh, by the vendor and also selected by the vendor as well. So in that case, we can look at uh, the, uh, how this one looked like. So when you talk about the distributed, uh, so the distributed system, so it was just, uh, in this case, we introduce a bus. So there was a bus in that case. And this bus, we can talk of the operating stations. Operating stations. Then we can also talk about another operating station here. Then we can also talk about another operating station here. So the, we can talk about that operating station. And then another operating station here. So in this case, we are simply talking about here. This one was the LAN communication network. Then after that, this one was communicating to what we refer to as the communication server. So here we have communication server. So we have the communication server. Then from the communication server, uh, this one was now uh, communicating through what we call one. So here we have RTU, maybe here. Again, we can have another RTU. So you will notice that uh, in the, the communication between uh, the communication server and the RTUs was by use of LAN, whereas the communication between, uh, the, the, there was communication between the operating station, that one was carried out by use of uh, LAN. So those ones are the two. So this, you can see the difference. In this case, we have an introductory, uh, both use of LAN and WAN, whereas this one was only using the wide area network alone. So those are some of the characteristics uh, of uh, the distributed SCADA system. So the last one, which is the third generation, is what we refer to as the uh, networked SCADA system. Networked SCADA system. So we can talk about the last uh, SCADA architecture, uh, the, th the last SCADA architecture, which is now referred to as networked. SCADA systems, network SCADA systems. So when you talk about the network SCADA system, this, as we have mentioned, this is the, la the, the, the current generation that is being used. And it basically has an open architecture. And also, it also has multiple network systems that share uh, master, fun um, master station functions. The RTU also use the protocols that are vendor propriety and again, it used the IP, that is the internet uh, protocol, in order to communicate between the master station and the communication equipment. And that one makes it to be, to be able to survive a disaster. So when uh, you talk about this, this one can be represented uh, in this manner, whereby we can have a SCADA master. We can talk of a SCADA master here. We can talk of SCADA master. Then from the SCADA master here, the communication will be to and from a wide area network. 
which is something like a cloud, so we can talk of wide area network, wide area network, and then we can also talk about, so that is one, and then this one, the wide area network can communicate to the communication server here, we can talk of that one as the communication server, communication server, communication server, then this one can talk to the, leg the, the legacy remote terminal unit, uh, legacy remote terminal unit, and again, uh, this one can still talk to the networked RTU. So that one talks to networked RTU. So basically, uh, that is uh, the representation of uh, a networked SCADA system. So that is the representation of a networked SCADA system. So we, we can look at uh, some of the areas of application of SCADA systems. So the areas of applications, we can look at the areas of application of SCADA systems. Oh, before we look at the area of application, we can also well look at uh, how uh, the, the, the SCADA is deployed. So um, I'll just uh, summarize that, how the SCADA is deployed. So when you talk about how to deploy a SCADA system, then basically what we are simply talking about is what means of communication is used in a SCADA system. That is what defines uh, uh, deployment of SCADA system. And there are several ways by which uh, this one can be done, uh, several means of communication. I'll just mention them. So if you want uh, more materials on that, you can still go to triple es dot education and you will get uh, a material on SCADA system. So I'll just mention them. Uh, some of the uh, ways by which the SCADA system can be deployed is by the use of the twisted uh, pair metallic cable, uh, whereby the twisted pair is the, which is always the most uh, uh, popular medium used utility and it, it, this one has existed for several years. Another one can be use of the coaxial uh, metallic cable. You can talk of the coaxial metallic cable like the one similar to the one that is used in the aerials. We can also talk of the fiber optic that is nowadays very, very common, the fiber optic cable. Uh, we can also talk about uh, uh, the power line carrier, uh, PLCC. This is majorly used uh, by the Kenya Power. In their, in their power line in order to monitor uh, what uh, is happening in their line. And that is always, in mostly Kenya Power usually employed at the distribution level. You can also talk about uh, the satellites. The satellites can also be used to deploy a SCADA system. You can talk of the least, uh, least telephone lines, the ultra high frequency radio, uh, and among others. You can still talk about uh, uh, the spread spectrum radio, the microwave radio, and so on and so forth. So uh, any mo mode of communication that can be used in order to communicate between the between SCADA center and the RTU, those ones entails what, uh, uh, how SCADA systems are de deployed. We can also talk about uh, the attacks uh, through SCADA systems, uh, of course, uh, because it is something that is uh, in the network, it is always uh, uh, vulnerable to very many threats, and that one, you can uh, look at uh, the same materials under EWS education and go through that uh, so that you can understand what happens and also how to develop a security uh, strategy for a SCADA system. So let us now look at the areas of application of SCADA systems, and maybe we can also look at uh, the, a little bit of uh, people who provide the hardware for SCADA systems as well as the, automa the, the, the automation solutions uh, for SCADA systems. So when you talk about the areas of application of SCADA system, one of the areas that we can talk about is water and wastewater. Uh, one is water and wastewater. Water and waste water. So in that case, we are talking about the companies that uh, give uh, water, uh, provide uh, water like the Nairobi water and so on. You can also talk about other people that use it is power. And as I've mentioned, the power line carriers can be used and, and this one can also be used in order to monitor uh, systems. It's very, very important to monitor power so that uh, you 
reduce the, uh, the power outages. Another one can also be oil and gas. Oil and gas companies usually use the SCADA in order to monitor the processes, like you can talk of the level of the tank uh, for the various, uh, various uh, chemicals that are being used in such case. You can also use it in research facilities. Also can be used in transportation, like pipeline transportation, security systems, siren systems. You can still use them in irrigation and communication control. And uh, so those are some of the areas whereby, I'm not saying that those are the only areas, but uh, we can still have several areas where it can be used. So which uh, companies usually provide the SCADA uh, system? Oh, so we are talking about the SCADA system manufacturers. SCADA system manufacturers. Can talk about SCADA system manufacturers. So the SCADA system manufacturers are very many, uh, but we are simply going to talk about some few, like the modular SCADA, that is a company in the UK. Uh, we can also talk about the MOSCAD, uh, that is Motorola. We can talk of Rockwell Automation, uh, ABCO, ABB, as well as Land Landronics. So for the SCADA software, these ones are, uh, we can talk about what are the SCADA softwares that are available. I believe some of us have seen uh, Rockwell, Alan Bradley. You can also talk of the SCADA that is developed by the General Electric. We talk of Amazon, we also have. You talk of Schneider. We also have the Honeywell, the Siemens, uh, the Crozets, the Moller, so on and so forth. So those ones are some of uh, the SCADA uh, manufacturer. So if you are looking at, at a way of implementing a SCADA system, you can always do your research. Maybe there are more other, but I've just mentioned, but a few. So I think that one should be, uh, should end whatever. We were talking about the SCADA system, but basically if you want to know what a SCADA system is, then a SCADA system is simply a way of monitoring how or whatever uh, how, how the processes are carried out without being necessarily there. So the RTUs, that is uh, the uh, field, 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 field open field devices or open field interface devices will collect or gather the information that is happening at the remote end. And this will go through a communication channel so the communication channel will transfer the information on whatever is happening on the other end, then take the information to the communication server, whereby this information uh, will have what we call the human machine interface in order to interpret so that there is a communication, there is mutual communication between the operator and the machines that we are talking about so that they can speak the same and uh, they can understand each other and also provide a way by which uh, the response can be given by the operator in order to uh, uh, create, maybe bring about a corrective mechanism in case of a failure. And then after that, uh, you, you are also, the, 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 the SCADA system also provides a very good uh, animated graphical user interface that will enable you to see whatever is happening at the other end without necessarily going there. So that is simply uh, what SCADA system is all about. Thank you for listening.